Okay. So one of the strengths of this process of digital painting is that at any, at any point, I can strip back the layers and kind of see how it developed and see what I'm really relying on. So my last refined paint layer is doing a lot. You know, it establishes a lot of those highlights. It really shapes the nose and the hairline. What I'm going to do is delete out those side palette colors because I just haven't been using them. And then I'm going to take all of these layers, all of the, the different paint layers that build to this on the background. I'm going to select them all by holding down Command. I think I need to uh, unlock them in order to do this too. And I can decide whether I want to include the structure sketch or not. I don't think I need that anymore. So I can just get rid of that layer because it takes up memory. I definitely need that base paint layer, right? Because without it, this is all I have. This is where I've, the only places I've been doing refined paint so far. And then I can turn off my sketch as well. I won't delete it just because it's part of the process. It's nice to refer back to how we started, but I'm not going to select that. But then I have my, my base color layer, which was just cut out from gray and then turned into this kind of darker magenta, desaturated magenta. So I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to add these other layers on top holding down command. All right. Then what I'm going to do is hold down my option key. We have done this before. Go to layer and say merge layers What while holding down my alt option key. It's the same key. And what that does is it combines everything. I'll mark this red so you can see it really clearly. This is what's called a combined paint layer. So it is my, and this combined paint layer, I can now turn off the ones underneath, the components. And what's great about it is I don't need to be precious with it. For instance, if I'm questioning my overall proportions, like of the face that I've been working on because I've been working within kind of those rough shapes that I started with. I can take my combined paint layer and use control T and I can warp it. If, if you've ever painted with acrylic and then peeled that dried acrylic paint off of the canvas or off of the paper, it's just a plastic film that you can stretch like silly putty. So if I think the nose was just a little too uh, short, if my computer will help me with this processing, there we go. I can just tug at my overall paint a little bit. And sometimes that's all that's needed to tighten up a likeness. Same thing with the jawline. I can tighten that up a little bit by pulling up the cheek. And then sometimes, because especially the eye is so important, at this stage, when I'm in the refined painting layer, 
I'm trying to hit return and, and finish that off. Okay, so we can see the difference now. Turn on the layers underneath. Come on. So from that to that. Come on, turn on. <laughs> there we go. And it's just a good way to kind of assess it. So she looks more powerful here. I think it it's starting to get more at the likeness. I think I need to shape the tip of the nose a little bit. And then the eye needs to move a little bit closer to the bridge of the nose. And so now at this point with this combined layer, I can also do things like this, which is like taking an X-Acto knife and cutting out a part of your acrylic paint film. Except with digital art, I can just make a copy of that little section. And I can just experiment with stretching it or moving it slightly. Warping it. You know, all the stuff we learned in compositing, except now we're compositing with our own brush strokes. You know, I can shape the eye that way. And it works really well because these are all just pixels we've made in the computer. You know, it's not relying on on someone's the quality of their photography or of their pixels. So whatever techniques are helpful to you, you can use. And so that that makes a big difference to the likeness. Because we're so sensitive to those those tiny proportions in the triangle of the eye to the nose to the mouth, right? And her nostril in the same way is a little too broad. Doesn't mean it doesn't look believable, it just doesn't quite match her. So I can make a duplicate of just that feature and tweak it a little bit. So you're, you're, you're able to push your paint around at any time. Yeah. Now this gives me the opportunity, as I refined, refine it now with my brush, the same way I have been, Choosing colors on the topmost layer. With a brush that's bigger than two pixels. I can hopefully start to really finish it off. Yeah, trackpads are hard to get exact placement. That's a worthy challenge. It's either too much or too little. And the good thing is, if I do too much, I can always erase it back and reveal the paint layers underneath, which are there. So lose, use layers to your advantage. So what do I mean by that? I'm zooming in way too much here, just so I can use the eraser to take out this little lip.
and digital painting up close is not as satisfying as traditional paint film. It just isn't. And then I'm going to combine all of those kind of cut out layers into this. So now my combined paint layer has these kind of cutouts in it and I can use the eraser to blend it with what was underneath. Just ways of adding complexity. Okay, now, in order to, to work on some of the finishing, just because you don't have unlimited time, and we're getting to the end of the class, and we're going to submit this next class. So now I, I want to kind of look at it as a whole and then choose my battles. Each step has made an improvement, right? And I decide, okay, how can I make the most impact at finishing it off? I'm going to go ahead and close my navigator so I can see what color, what opacity, what am I missing? So I'm going to work with a really big brush and try to assert some of these things. And it's you can always make bold bold choices. I hope you you always feel like no matter how well things are going for you in your painting. Because it's digital, you know that you always have the chance to work with a duplicate or to take something back a little bit. Working between your brush your eraser, your eyedropper, and what you choose. That's what's going to matter. Considering the smudge tool for smoothing and softening. I'm just tapping and hitting with the eraser a little bit. It's almost like sponge painting. That uses the edges of the big brush to create more complexity. Cutting out the form. And because you're doing so much of the same thing, and you're kind of looking at it in the same way so often, it's easy to think you're not making progress, but 
I like this ability.